On the news, President Buhari appoints Major General Farouk Yahaya as new Chief of Army Staff. National Assembly promises to complete amendment on 1999 Constitution by July. And Ballet School celebrates students on International Children's Day. Glad to have you join us on News Now. I am Folashadi Ogrindi. President Mohamed Obwari has appointed Major General Farouk Yahaya as a new Chief of Army Staff. This was made known in a statement signed by Acting Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General Ungema Nwachiku on Thursday. Prior to his appointment, Major General Yahaya was a general officer commanding one division of the Nigerian Army and the incumbent theater command of the counterterrorism counterinsurgency military outfits in the Northeast, code named Operation Hadin Kai. President Mohamed Obari has appointed Basha Mohamed as a new Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. Mohamed will take over from Imam Suleiman, who will also take over from him as a Federal Commissioner for the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Gaba Shehu, disclosed this in a statement on Thursday. The swap, according to the statement, is in order to realize and sustain government's abiding desire for effective and efficient service delivery in the two organizations. The Minister for Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, says with the right encouragement, students in public schools in Nigeria can compete with other counterparts all over the world. The Minister said this in Abuja on Thursday while celebrating his birthday with students to mark the 2021 Children's Day. TV3 Sister Simsaladigun has the details. It is Rotimi Amechi's 56th birthday, and the Minister decided to mark the day in celebration of Children's Day. Here at the Government Secondary School, we say Zone 3, Amechi joined the students in a book reading session. Reading from the book Let Me Die Alone by John Cargo, the minister encouraged the students to be focused, determined, and work hard to achieve their aims. I'm impressed with the children. The way they spoke, the ones that read, and all that. As I called the young girl who was on my left first, because she was very expressive. And there's an improvement as we go. Basically, it's to encourage young children to focus on education because it's the basis for which most of us do. The students expressed their happiness with the gesture and wished the minister a happy birthday. I'm excited and I was also surprised because like the, min the minister came to read with us and it's also a great pleasure having him. I was actually thinking we were we're we're going to they will be doing the reading while we just be listening to him. But I was surprised when I saw the teacher gave him the book to read with us. So it's actually a pleasure for us reading with the minister. I was really happy because you hardly see someone of a high caliber like that to come to even a government school to spend his time with students. Some of the guests at the event thanked the minister for his passion for the younger generation and his efforts to rekindle the reading culture in students empowered to lead us to the next generation. And if there's anything this country is lacking today, it's leadership. But I've seen leadership in this place. I've seen young men and women, actually, young girls that radiate hope for the future. Young girls that indeed I'm confident that with them um, on the driver's seat, the future of our country is great or will be great. It's a good thing and that the minister could come here today to read with the student is to encourage them. I, I want to assure you that uh, for these 50 students that were here today, uh, the other students that come to school, we get to know about it. We will show them the, the film and the picture. And I want to tell you that it will inspire a lot of them. That somebody who was already a governor, who was a speaker, and presently a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is coming down to read with children. They will be wondering, somebody who is already there, why should they read? But you know that. It's a common saying that readers are leaders. So it should go a long way to encourage the students and inspire them. The minister also extends gifts to the students to mark the celebration and charge them to be focused in their academics. Simi Salatiku, TV 360 News. 
Every May 27th is Children's Day, a day set aside by the United Nations to celebrate children globally. Schools in Odi, Olowo, Ojuwoye, LCDA celebrated a day with a match pass and different competition to make them happy. Vice Chairman of the LCDA, Shei Jakonde, would praise the events, advise the students to be focused and hardworking in their studies. He also called on parents to be more watchful and take deep interests in their children's education always. Jakonde would disclose that the council has different educational packages to encourage and support students, called on parents to be more watchful and take deep interest in their children's education. You see that the buses that brought all the kids from the, uh, from the 27 primary schools are buses that were bought from the, by the local government. And this bus, uh, you can see they, uh, they were in brand new condition, you know, and they, they, they take the kids to and from home every day. You know, apart from that, we have also um, give, I mean, give out DC form free, and we don't, we just, we just don't give them free DC forms. What we've done is that we put a measure to it, you know, where that we make sure that people that are diligent one, and they're also qualified. The chairman in my local government has been so wonderful in handling education, especially Odiolo Oduo CD. He touched every school. He imparted a lot of programs into the lives of the children. Children's Day is the day of children to be happy. I want to thank the um, sailing home director for what he has done and I appreciate him. May God bless him. I expect the government to do to do anything to do the road. The road of our house is very bad. I'm so excited because I didn't, I didn't know that we are going to take second. In my mind, I, was, I felt that we are not going to take any medal or anything. So I'm so excited that we took second place. I expect them to make children, inspire them to be great in the future and let them be, yes, make them proud, to their, make their parents proud to them. And still on Children's Day celebration, the kids of Ultra Best Dance School, located in Ogba area of Lagos, celebrated their kids' ballet dances to commemorate the Children's Day celebration. The children took time to do various dance steps and educate everyone about the advantages of dancing to both physical and emotional well-being of humans. Artistic Director of Ultra Best Dance School, Juliet Joel Thomas, said dance heals the body and soul. She also emphasized on the need for parents to, send mo to spend more time with their children. Dance makes children fit and healthy and it also nurtures your child's talent and spark your little dancer's creativity. Dance classes can also help a child's post and balance, preventing bad habits from forming that can be permanent in adulthood. Dance has been able to help me discover new things about myself. The special behind creating this dance school is to bring out the best in kids. Because I noticed I love seeing children dancing. So I noticed that the one hour schools allocate for it as extracurriculum is not enough for them to bring out the best and to nurture the skill they have. So I decided to come up with my own school. Or trapeze dance school and what we do here we do professional ballet dancing we also do gymnastics and we help them with their self-esteem mind development we help them build their stamina flexibility moral standards and we help them catch their phone and also socialize the National Assembly will pass the Constitution Amendment Bill in July. Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omoagege, said the Parliament will conclude voting on the 16 thematic areas of the Constitution Amendment process before the annual recess in July. TV3 Sisters Mary Kanu reports. The Ninth Assembly is working hard to amend part of the 1999 Constitution, which has been identified as a stumbling block for national cohesion and development. With public hearing on the Constitution amendments currently ongoing across the country, the Deputy President of the Senate, Omar Gege, gave the assurance that the lawmakers will do their best to produce a document Nigerians will be proud of. Omar Gege, who disclosed that 250 memoranda of understanding have so far been received, urged other stakeholders yet to submit theirs to do so to allow for robust deliberations.
and Nigerians have clamored for amendment of the 1999 Constitution to address fundamental governance challenges. Others have called on the National Assembly to initiate bills that would devolve more powers to the states and address the security challenges in the country. This constitutional amendment process is an attempt by the National Assembly to respond to these demands within the context of the powers conferred on us by the Constitution in a manner that will further strengthen our democracy. We're using this opportunity to call on all Nigerians to effectively engage the process and present their demands or recommendations for consideration by the National Assembly. He added that the amendment process and public hearing holding across the six geopolitical zones of the country will take more impulse from Nigerians that will help the parliament debate on the matter. Nigerians who are clamoring for this expect that uh, we come up with uh, a finished product in no time. And uh, the calendar we've set for ourselves is that uh, uh, we're going to have a vote on each of the bills, you know, before we go on the July recess. The votes will be taken on these uh, now 16 uh, thematic uh, uh, areas. Following from the analysis of the memoranda submitted, the issues have increased to 16 to further create opportunity for citizens to make inputs into the amendment process on any of these issues listed above or, another issue, or others who wish to present, introduce or promote new issues that will promote good governance and unity of the country. The committee is embarking on public hearings at the six geopolitical zones at the national level. Omar Gigi also assures that the Petroleum Industry Bill and the Electoral Act Amendment Bill will be passed before the July recess. Mary Kano, TV360, Nigeria. Stakeholders in the anti-corruption community say the fight against corruption is a fight for all Nigerians and not government alone. This was part of the submission at a one-day town hall meeting on citizens' participation in the fight against corruption in the judiciary, education and electricity sector. TV3 Sisters at Bisala Adibayo tells us more. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, CERAP, is organizing this town hall discussion on how citizens can join in the fight against corruption in Nigeria. Guest speaker for Labichete Olu, a university don, says the society is enmeshed in corruption in every sector, including the academic sector, which is supposed to be a shining example to the corrupt society. Vice chancellors, rectors, then the award contracts to staff, I get colleagues. I don't go mention name because of legal implication. And, and if I may mistake, I'm going to there to defend me in court. I get colleagues, eh, will be lecturers, will be professors. What is these professors supposed to do? Not to do teaching, not to do research, not to do community service. But the man that contract or two. And they get contract to supply gravels in my university. Uh, in the issue, uh, the issue receipts, you know, for people where they encroach their university property and so on and so forth. I will take a explain where someone will talk to the administrator and he can see say resources they scarce. He can't dip his hand into pension fund, can't dispend them. And you know the law on pension reform, 2004 as amended. How university go explain now? Say pension fund, our own pension, no, my own pension included. I don't they work since so as you see me small rich, I don't pass for the 24 years for service, and someone will spend my money. If I retire, I finish, wait till I go. Wait, wait, let me go remain. One after the other, stakeholders explain how endemic corruption has become and what can be done to address the situation. I discover one thing among Nigerians. You encourage corruption. You pay for what are free just because you don't want to waste your time. I believe, and I feel most of us were guilty of this. For example, the NIN registration. At the bill, we take our time. All the corruption we noticed during the NIN registration would not be. Federal Minister of Health is committed to collaborating with all relevant agencies and stakeholders in the fight against corruption. The current Federal Minister of Health has zero tolerance to corruption and committed to the fight of corruption in the country. And also supportive of the continuum of this very important approach of this very important cross crusade 
of fighting corruption. We in the health sector, we believe that this program will enhance the effort put in place within the sector to address the systemic virus of corruption. One way or the other, we are all involved in corrupt practices. Be it when you connect, do illegal co uh, connection at home, when you pay for services that you are supposed to get freely because you just want to hurry out of that place. I just want to encourage us this morning, let's take a stand because this is something that affects us so that corruption does not kill us. At the end of the discussion, stakeholders agree that corruption is a pandemic that needs a nationwide lockdown to address and all citizens must be involved to change the status quo. Abisola Adebayo, TV360, Lagos. We take a break here, but still to come, World Bank's approved $700 million for water supply in Nigeria. Let's take a recap of some of our top stories. President Mohamed Obari has appointed Major General Farouk Yahaya as the new Chief of Army Staff. This was made known in a statement signed by Acting Director of the Defense Information, Brigadier General Oyema Mwachiku on Thursday. We also told you that the National Assembly has promised that it will pass the Constitution Amendment Bill in June. Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omoagege, said the Parliament will conclude voting on the 16 thematic areas of the Constitution Amendment process before the annual recess in June. In case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv36nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are at TV360 Online. Nigeria on Wednesday recorded 48 new cases of coronavirus infection in five states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 166,146. According to official data released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, Lagos took the lead with 22 new cases, followed by Rivers and Inugu with 11 cases each. According to the data, no new death was recorded from the virus, which has already claimed 2,071 lives. The data also shows that 156,529 have successfully have been successfully treated and discharged after testing negative to the virus. The federal government on Wednesday handed over 40 operational vehicles for distribution to coordinators of the state COVID-19 action recovery and economic stimulus known as NG Cares. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Farouk, said the vehicles were procured by the Federal Project Support Unit of her ministry. She handed over the vehicles to the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, at the Eagle Square, Abuja, for distribution to states and the Federal Capital Territory. The NG Cares is a federal government initiative with support from World Bank to mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Take a break here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Well, up next is business news and stock market review with Mary Kanu. 
Thank you very much, Falashadi. And now in business, the World Bank has approved $700 million credit to the Nigeria Sustainable Urban and Rural Water Supply, Sanitation and Hy Hygiene Program to aid access to portable water and improved sanitation services. The global financial institution explained in a statement on Thursday that the loan is from the International Development Ag Association, rather IDA, and it is expected to provide 6 million people with basic drinking water services and one point. 4 million people access to improved sanitation services. The program will also deliver improved water sanitation and hygiene wash services to 2,000 schools and healthcare facilities and assist 500 communities to achieve open defecation free status. A Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, says employers of labor need to follow the laid-down guidelines of employer-employee relations to get the best out of Nigerian workers. Director General of NECA, Timothy Olawale, said this at the maiden edition of NECA's 2020 Employers Excellence Award in Lagos. Olawale said it is important for employers of labor to be part of NECA so that the body can speak with one voice on issues that affect both employees and employers. The government should give recognition as it were to the fact that the contribution of the private sector and also those who keep people in employment uh, should take the front burner. And so when we have issues that has to do with such employers of labor, government should see it as something that should be quickly attended to. Um, such issues as they are not being able to access raw materials for their production, such issues as um, government policies of favorable government policies without necessarily paying attention to the fact that the more we are able to keep these businesses running, the better for our country. It's enlightened self-interest for you to actually embrace the same work because when an employee enjoys pension, enjoys a employee compensation scheme, enjoys medicals for himself, spouse, definitely such employee will be motivated to give his best. But because you are not under regulation, you are not under the tutelage of um, employer's body like NECA, you feel you are independent, you are a loose cannon out there. And this is a concern to us as NECA that there must be a way for us to bring every one of them under our um, umbrella so that best practices that we are celebrating today can be like a catechism to them. In these days of so much of disturbance and employment levels, his next passion is to see how he can create employment and bring more peace into the country. That is why, apart from having our core focus on the manufacturing sector, we are now diverting into the agricultural sector, which can, the rice, sugarcane, tomato, this can generate massive employment levels. Take a breather here and be back with a review of the stock market. Stay with us. The month of May is turning out to be one of the worst for the equities market and that is because the renewed sell pressure which started last week entered its ninth consecutive session at the close of today's trading. Investors lost over 99 billion naira which represent a decline of 0.49% on the market's main index. The major factor behind the latest decline comes on the back of downturns from Royal Lex and WAPIC as well as 21 other equities. While today's losses overshadowed 27 Kobo gains from Qtix and Champion and 16 other gainers. Now, meanwhile, the total volume of shares traded for the day was slightly lower as over 214 million goods exchanged hands in over 3,000 565 deals. Now on the foreign scene, it is a mixed trading day for global stocks as bargain hunters took charge of UK stock FTSE and Asian stock Nikkei as both markets are currently trading in the reds. While US stocks Dow Jones is trading in the green on the back of news reports that the White House is set to pitch a $6 trillion budget aimed at improving the economy. Well, that's all in today's review of the stock market. Back to Fulash 
Sasha Day now for the rest of the news. Uh, thank you very much, Miri, for that review. Uh, moving on now to the foreign scene, the head of the former junta in Mali, Asimi Goita, has declared himself the country's transitional president after stripping the country's interim president and former vice uh, prime minister of the APAS. The new development comes after, after President Ba Unda and Prime Minister Mokta Owain were released from military detention. Both ousted leaders had been taken to a military base late on Monday after a cabinet reshuffle in what was seen as Mali's second military coup in nine months. Goethe complained that the ex-president failed to consult him before after about the new cabinet. Well, up next is Entertainment Reports. Burner Boy is staging a four-country tour of his Grammy-winning studio album, Twice As Tall. The musician, who broke the news on Tuesday, will be making his first headline appearance at the O2, one of London's biggest entertainment arenas, on August 27. The show comes as the UK opens public spaces a year after the lockdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. In a Twitter post, the O2 also revealed that Burner will be among the artists to take part in its Welcome Back series. Fresh off his 2021 Grammy win, Burner Boy is the third artist to be announced for the program. Following the London concert at the O2, Burner Boy will head for Los Angeles in the US, Paris in France, and Amsterdam in the Netherlands on October 8, November 10, and November 15, respectively. Lawrence, the son of Nollywood producer Rita Daniel, has said that the stories about his mother marrying a younger man are untrue. The movie producer was said to have married her younger lover in a private ceremony in Delta State. According to Lawrence, the photos of the producer dressed in beautiful traditional outfits with her rumored lover were from a movie scene. It was earlier reported that Rita got married to her younger lover in a private traditional ceremony in Delta State. It was also reported that Rita's celebrity daughter, Regina Daniels, did not attend the wedding because she was against the union. And that's all we have on the entertainment segment of News Now. Away from entertainment now to sports. In commemoration of this year's Children's Day, the Diaspora Care Sports Foundation organized a basketball tournament for over 60 young basketball players from several clubs across the state. The event is designed to leverage on the power of sports to educate, inspire, and help youths develop their hidden talents. Coordinator of the event, Philip Braid, said it is important to use the sports for the total well-being of the child. We wanted to have, give the children something to look forward to, you know. Sports is all about physical and mental um, um, well-being. So the foundation intends to help these children by grooming them into very good athletes and at the same time honing their, um, their character. Just sitting at home because I really didn't plan to go out. So a coach just called us and said, ah, we're having a program today. And it was very nice, something, it went smoothly, even when the weather is hot, they did it. At this fast sound. Yeah, I learned a lot because there are some things I try to put in the game back which I don't know how to before. And it's a wrap on our news bulletin. Thank you for watching. I am Fola Shadi Ogrindi.